Greetings. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the Dr. Julius Nairi CPM UNIA ACL Division 421 mass meeting. Today is February 12, 2023. It's 5 14 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And um, today, what, what's the topic, um, President John? Because I'm not for sure what the topic is. I know we talked about it yesterday. Your phone on mute. No, um, yeah, we're going to um, discuss the Tyree Nichols situation. Okay. Okay. Um, today's um, open open discussion about Tyree Nich Nicholson. Okay. Um, before we get to the topic, let's start with the pledge. Um, you know, we're trying to start reading it together. Yes. Um, we kind of all need to stay on the same um, <laughs> rhythm yeah. um, as best as possible. All right, I'm going to start. I guess I'll start with the first line and then y'all come in with the second line. Okay. I commit my body, mind, and spirit, spirit I come, to the protect. No, we're going to read it together. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're going to read, read it, together, it together, not call and repeat, but read it together. Together. I commit my body, mind, and spirit. I commit my body, mind, and spirit. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> Um, we're reading it together. Uh, so, everybody read from the thing. <laughs> um, yeah, hold on a second, just So, mm -hmm. um, we in the past we have read the uh, pledge to the UNIA flag. I need to change this. This is the UNIA flag, not just the RBG flag. Um, we have read it as call and response. Um, we have been made aware that um, this pledge should be read in unison uh, together. So uh, we're not going to do call and response, but we should be reading it along with uh, Sister Tania. She's going to read the first line by herself, and then we come in on the second line to uh, for the protection, defense, and security. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm about to start. I commit my body, mind, and spirit to the to protection, the protection and defense, and security, and security of, of the, the red, 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 black, and, black and green. green. I dedicate my life to the redemption of Mother Africa. Mother Africa. And the liberation of scattered black children. I accept, I accept for I myself, my descendants, my descendants the, teachings the teachings of, of universal, universal African nationalism. And I promise, and I promise that, that our children will be filled with the purpose, with the purpose and the of, of themselves as African, as African, African, people. African people. In order to honor the cause of our struggle, we will not be a failure, neither falter nor fail. All black people are free united to one God, one God, one aim, one destiny. Race first. We're going to get it, y'all. I think like we should have like the whoever's leading should um you should follow the rhythm of the person that's leading and um not really your own rhythm. Like yeah. whoever's the leading voice, that way we can like get it. We gonna get it. Yeah, we'll get it. <laughs> we gonna get that. Okay. Um I um guidelines for the call today. Um today we're we're focusing on the Tyree Nicholson uh, story that you've been seeing in the news. And um so I guess we'll start off with um the background story and then you know we'll um let everyone 
give their input. Um, just whenever we do open discussion, just try to make sure that you're not the only person talking. If you find that you're the only person that, that's um, talking, just kind of give yourself a break and see if anyone else has any input. Um, a lot of time, unless there's a lot of people on here, I don't really just be like three to five minutes on open topic. Um, but just be sure that, you know, you're sharing the floor. Um, and then also, uh, let's keep it respectful. And um, that's about it. I'm going to pass it. <clears throat> Thank you, Sister Nia. Um... Well, I guess I need to find out what level of information everyone is. Everyone aware of um, the Tyree Nichols uh, situation in Memphis? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Let me see. I was trying to put this together um, as far as how to present it. <clears throat> um, I was struggling with that, um, trying to get it in a concise format. Um, let's see. Da, da, da. Okay. Uh, maybe this will. I'm hoping this is a good video for us. <clears throat> One second. One second. Um, So um, this is we not we don't have to do the whole video, but I'll just let DL Hughley talk about it a little I'm bit DL briefly. Hughley and welcome to the Daily Show. Um, of course, between me and Leslie and Wanda, this is starting to look a lot like BET. I tell you that. <laughs> do not be shocked if you see those diabetes commercials. You know? <laughs> oh 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 oh, Zambic. <laughs> Black people love that song. <laughs> you can have one foot, you still dancing that song. We don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> All right, of course, uh, we have a lot that we need to talk about, so we're going to uh, get right to it. Um, so I'm sure many of you heard by now that um, a young black man in Memphis was pulled over by the police, and uh, we all saw how it went down. For the first time, we are seeing the violent arrest of Tyree Nichols. What began as a traffic stop quickly turned violent as captured on multiple videos released tonight by the city of Memphis. Officers are seen pulling Nichols out of the car. I'm just trying to go home. Oh, man. They use pepper spray and deploy a taser during a struggle. Then for roughly three minutes, officers are seen repeatedly kicking and punching Nichols while he was handcuffed. As Nichols lay on the ground bloodied and bruised, several minutes go by without any of the officers administering first aid. Nichols died in the hospital three days later. Is it a shocking video? Yes. Shocking. You know, you know who wasn't shocked by that? Black people. Dude, I know, no, we were at, like. All right, I don't want to go. We're not going to um, go too deep into that. Um, so for me, I'll just jump straight to it. Um, give my assessment, uh, like I told our uh, members on the executive meeting last night um <clears throat> it's it shows the trajectory of black america um uh, i'm an engineer um one of the things that we have to do is is study statistics uh and one way you can determine a trend in statistics is by looking at statistics at two at least two different points. If you've got two points, you can form a line and that will show you the trend. But um, the two points that I, that come to my attention, uh, one would be Tyree Nichols, January 7th. And then the other would be Rodney King, uh, March 3rd, 1991. Um, and after 30 years 
um, of what happened to Rodney King in Los Angeles uh, to uh, by white police officers. Uh, now, you know, in 2023, you're seeing um, pretty much an identical image, um, except the uh, the the results were worse because they led to death. Uh, and they were also caused at the hands, <clears throat> not of white officers, but of black officers. <clears throat> so um, the, the, the question that came to mind uh, that Sister Tania brought uh, to our attention yesterday was, you know, can we change the system from within? Um, uh, it seems that, you know, that's been the selling point uh, for our people to continue what I see as an integration process, but in order to try to get us to come into their society, uh, some of our people um, are of the mindset that uh, you can change the system once you get inside. Uh, so I just want to open the floor uh, with that. You know, um, what do what do we think as Atlanta Division Four Twenty One um, about what happened with Tyree Nichols? Uh, you can, you know, compare it to <clears throat> other cases. Um, and, and we even, <clears throat> I remember it was just last year we were talking about, it was in the month of July. Uh, where is it at? Here it is. We had, I had brought up this slide and uh, we were talking about how uh, Peyton Gendron in May was a wake up call for black people. You know, and how, um, you know, we, we need to be aware that these things are happening. These race soldiers are out there. Um, but, you know, we've never really considered uh, our people being a part of that system. So I uh, just want to open the floor, you know, um, and give everybody a chance to give their thoughts on, um, you know, this situation and how we should address it uh, as a division and as a local government. Yes, uh, so call on the conference line. Hey, it's Brother Sean. Greetings, Brother Sean. How you doing? Greetings, greetings. Well, uh, what happened to Tyree? Was a tragedy, yes, to a love. It's always been. The only thing is that we have social media and, and we're actually seeing it. We always had these type of uh, uh, melanated people that was working for the enemy. They always been there. This is nothing new. It's just that the way it's being told, the story is being told. That's why some people are like, oh man, this is our people. Well, hell, if you look at it, <laughs> let, me, let me say it this way. In the Bible, it says that Judas sold Jesus out for 30 feet of silver, right? Yeah. But that's all they talk about. But look at it real closely. He told the Roman soldiers that I would kiss him so you will know who he is. So you mean to tell me, great a man as Jesus was, did nobody know who he was? He had to go point the man out? So in that region, that leads me to believe, I've never seen a black woman go to white folks, black people who look the same. So do this, and Jesus was the same as in color or as in appearance. Yeah. So, therefore, Judas told Jesus, that was a black man sending another black man out. Yes, sir. So, I'm saying that if you just take it from a biblical experience and bring it forward, well, hell, Henry Thurman said, to the same more slaves if they only knew that, that it was slaves. These people and white folks are quick to tell you it was your own people that sold you in the slaves. So, I mean, I don't know why it's a shock right now to see 
five officers from another black man in the street? Why is it a shot? It's happening every day around us. When we don't get involved and deal with the problem that we have to get rid of some of these Negroes first in order to deal with the problem. Yeah. We got them in our own family. We got them in our own blood related, supposed to be family. But, you know, I don't consider blood related family. I think that people that think like you, that's your family. People that want to make progress, like uh, the 421. You know, we are all here. I consider us as in our family, even though we're not blood related. Yeah. So we have them people around us. I don't know, really don't know, you know, um, how you want to get a on this or what somebody else's opinion is going to be because it, it always fits. It's not nothing new. The only thing about it is just being thrown to the front page of the newspaper. Well, well, let me, um, just to race first, I want to, just so everyone is the, the question, I know it's a lot that I said, but the question would be, can we change the system from within? And, and if not, what's, what's the alternative? Well, if you, you're not going to change a system that was not designed for you anyway. It's just like you going to somebody else's house trying to take over. Hmm. How are you going to change a system that was designed for one specific individual? And that was the white man. Not even the white man. The white man is the only individual in the United States of America that's never been oppressed. Hmm. So he the one, if you look at who makes the laws, Matter of fact, let me give you a good idea of what's going on. Look at Mississippi, Jackson, Mississippi. They re they 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 outlined a white community, a red line outlined a white community as they did the blacks. They create trying to create a separate law, uh, judicial system to protect white folks and these black people out there. So everything that they have done to oppress black people. They are reversing it now and putting it on white people for protection. Hmm. It's happening around us. But we want to, hey, baby, what's going on? Pop our fingers, you going to the club tonight? Hmm. Yeah. We want to pop our fingers. We want to disrespect our women. We ain't worried about the next man. I'm getting mine. You do you. I'm going to do me. That's, that's the way it is. It's sad, but it's real. Understand. Let me. Um, was anyone else that uh, wanted to comment on this topic? Or, Race uh, first, Doctor Shams. Yes, um, we are used to to this type of tragedy uh, appearing in the Caucasian government, uh, military, and police. You know. But racism is not just a color. Race, actual racism is an idea and thought behavior of action. It is not a color. Racism is all kinds. It's of all kinds and it's everywhere. Just because these officers were happen to be black, that don't mean that they was a racist against their own kind. Because in order to enslave us, the Moroccan president of Africa back, back around the time of 1886 when Noble Drew Ali was born into the world. Over there, it was the uh, Moroccan president or, or prime minister, whatever you want to call him, who gave Blacks, Europeans, and Arabs the right to enslave us, saying that we won't do nothing about it. And here it is today. We, we're not doing much about it. What what should be done is that just like that brother died, they should die too. That's Quran. Peace and race first. <laughs> Understand? Uh, <laughs> Understand, Doctor Shams. I hear you. Um, that is a suggestion. Uh, anyone else? Yes. Let me go. Um, Wait. Go ahead, sister. 
Yes, this is uh, Sister Aziza. These officers that uh, put this beating on him, to my understanding, is this a special group of officers that were trained to do this type of um, combat on what they call uncontrollable uh, prisoners or victim that they would call out a certain team that would come out and um, the, I guess the enforcers. But uh, beyond all of this, I think a lot of this has to start from at home. We've got to teach our children that uh, obey the law, don't run, because if you run, they're going to run after you. And nothing good comes of that. But a lot of this is, is basically from fear. Everybody's afraid of them because we don't know what's going to happen when we are pulled over with the mercy. Hmm. Race first. Race first. Uh, thank you, Sister Aziza. That's a, a great point. Um, and when we, if we have time, um, I'll go to uh, the course of African philosophy because um, Marcus Garvey has some comments in that text about uh, how we should handle our relationship with police. Um, but um, in, in essence, Garvey says that uh, the police have are supposed to be the public protectors. Um, and, you know, as such, we should have a relationship with them. Uh, we should know who they are uh, and they should know who we are. Um, but yeah, um, I'll, I'll, I'll go to that later on and, and give Garvey's comments. Oh, shoot. Got to knock on my computer. So we've got one aspect of, let's call it retaliation, uh, eye for an eye, uh, and then another aspect of, uh, respecting, uh, police officers and um, you know, uh, understanding this the aspect of fear when it comes to traffic stops. Yes, uh, President John. Attorney Motep. Yes, uh, I'm thinking at the time that he uh, got up and ran. Uh, that was after they had tased him. And, and re remember, uh, whatever he did, it was a traffic stop. Mm -hmm. and, and they're saying the, the uh, Memphis police uh, chief uh, uh, is saying there's no evidence of a traffic Viol uh, yeah, by violation. Interesting. Okay, yeah. And, and the officers, it, it seemed on one of the uh, body cams uh, at the stop, uh, taking him and gr grabbing him by, uh, by his sh uh, shirt and, and jerking him uh, out of his car. Hmm. And now, who of us have ever, and the brother says on the tape, I didn't do anything. Hmm. You know what? You know what? You know I didn't do anything. And who of us have been grabbed by a police officer and, and dragged out of the car when when you haven't done anything and, and you're tased? And, and this uh, one of the particular body cams. Uh, videos is from a white officer uh, mm -hmm. uh, who is the first one it looks like that tased the, uh, the, the brother who hadn't done anything mm. All right. and, and, and so they had him down on the ground and, and I haven't seen that uh, body cam as to what they did to him other than I think other than tasing him, uh, but but he was encircled. 
I've seen one, it looks like he was encircled and somehow they let him get up and run. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that's my, my taking when the, the uh, video, the, the uh, photo you have on, on the screen there, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's the second location that uh, I, I believe. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, Okay, yeah, that's the second second location after they caught up with him. Mm -hmm. But and I'm thinking at the first location, he was also encircled. And these officers know you ain't gonna get up and be able to run. Okay, uh, somehow, and and uh, no, you're you're not. They're skilled uh, enough. They're not gonna let you get up and run after they're down there beating you uh, yeah. so yeah so that's it was in uh i've spoken to or heard some brothers who've been stopped uh saying that is a, an understandable reaction mm -hmm. uh you know to to for the beating he was taking uh there at that first location for doing nothing he hadn't done anything Okay, and, and and so he was getting up. He wasn't too far from home. They said a hundred yards away, he was running home. Hmm. And, and when they was beating him at the second location, he was yelling for his he, he, his mother, anybody to try to you know uh, get there. Uh, so so I I'm saying it's understandable. Yeah, you you're absolutely right. You shouldn't. You know, run, run. That that when you when they stop us, uh, that could be a a shot in the back, like they did. The I think that brother was in. Uh, I, I forgot what. But, Walter Scott in North or South Carolina. I can't yes. Remember. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that could be a, a consequence. But this brother Tyree uh, was literally getting beat you know, uh, beaten, beaten, yeah, yeah. yeah. did you, you uh, did you get up and you get, get up, man, you know, if you can, and, and uh, uh, get out of there, uh, those are uh, just some of my thoughts. Yes, sir. Race, race first. Race first. Thank you, Attorney Emotep. Um, but let, let, before we, let me go to, I pulled up something briefly on um, the Scorpion unit, um, but that's the unit that is responsible for uh, what happened to Brother Tyree. <clears throat> um, on Google, it says, what is Scorpion unit in Memphis police? Scorpion says, acronym Street Crimes Operations to Restore Peace uh, in Our Neighborhood. So, Police, Memphis police said Scorpion team would be tackling violent crime in the city. Scorpion was an acronym for street crimes operations to restore peace in our neighborhoods. At the time, MPD brass told WREG the unit was comprised of three part parts, crime suppression, auto theft, and gang activity. Um, and for me, this, this brings in the point, you know, a lot of the times, in the past, uh, the solution has been, you know, more training and better training. Um, but, um, you know, overqualified is the, is this, is the comment coming to my mind. I remember there was a time when our people would go for jobs and we were considered overqualified. But, uh, when I think about, you know, these type of, you know, this type of unit, crime suppression, auto theft, and gang activity, uh, doing a traffic stop, um, you know, is there not enough crime, auto theft, and gang activity to keep the Scorpion unit focused on that stuff? And where are the normal, you know, um, the normal traffic cops? And how come they weren't uh, available to 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 do this traffic stop? But um, you know, that's just one thing I wanted to point out was um, from you know going back to George Floyd and and defund the police and. Um, the police department's becoming more and more militarized. Um, the question that I have to ask is, you know, 
is there a threat to justify all of this militarization? Uh, and if if not, you end up with these situations where it's supposed to be a normal traffic stop, but you've got a tactical gang unit, you know, there doing the traffic stop, and it's like that doesn't seem to 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 go together. But uh, I'll, op I'll open the floor back up uh, if anyone else that had any comments on this topic of uh, Tyree Nichols, <clears throat> can we change the system from within and uh, alternatives? <clears throat> Race first. Race first, Brother Art. No, we can't change it from within. Um, uh, these, these brothers have taken on the uh, mentality of, uh, of the police. Yes, sir. I have uh, heard about uh, this last officer that got arrested. He was, uh, he had filmed uh, the gentleman while he was leaning up against the car. Yeah. He sent the film to several other people. And uh, somebody has suggested that this was a hit. They said that the young man was dating one of the uh, officer's uh, ex-girlfriends and that they were ticked off about it. So they decided to, to get him. <laughs> I've, you know? I've heard that as well, Brother Art. Um, I, I prefer to stay away from that personally. I mean, that, that just seems difficult for me to put all of that together as if um he was targeted for those reasons um i think it i think that's more of a coincidence <clears throat> personally yeah i think more will come out later on if it is you yeah. know but but i just want to throw that out there but no you can't change it from within um it's too deep in people's souls man uh you know, the only way to do that, man, is we got to control our own neighborhoods. We can't just let them come in and do what they want to do. Absolutely. And that's 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 what I was waiting to hear. Um, <laughs> um, that's what I was waiting to hear. But Garvey teaches us the only protection that we have is uh, governing ourselves. So uh, organizing amongst ourselves building our own uh, nation, our own communities, um, but our own uh, everything, you know, our own police yeah. force, um, our own defense force. Um, yeah. One of the things that, <laughs> the reason why I agree with Brother Art is, um, you know, as we come into this fall tonight, one of the first things that we do is uh, it's a ritual that makes this space sacred. And that ritual is the pledge to the UNIA flag. Um, but that is us uh, declaring our allegiance. <clears throat> um, now, on the, on the flip side, um, these officers, judges, lawyers, um, anyone that is a part of the United States system uh, pledges their allegiance to the United States system on a regular basis. I don't know if it's daily or what, but um, the, the patches, the flags, the insignias, the things that they represent uh, have nothing to do with Pan-Africanism. Um, so um, these individuals are, you know, they are proudly a part of the system. You know, um, this is, this may be a bad analogy, but this is the analogy that's in my head. If United States was designed to be, um, you know, as a system, and, and let's just say, for example, a lawnmower, um, a system has a specific purpose. A lawnmower's purpose would be to cut grass. Um, so you as an individual may think that, you know, if you come in and you take the highest position, you know, a position of leadership, president or whatever, uh, that's almost like changing out the engine. You know, you are the critical uh, vital component. You went from a, a, a 
200 horsepower engine to a 600 horsepower engine. Um, but at the end of the day, you're still attached to this system. And all you have done is made uh, this lawnmower or the United States system more effective at cutting grass, you know, uh, and, and we know when we look at the history of police uh, and, and, you know, the slave catchers, um, that is how this system was designed. That is the foundation. Um, and that is what the system, in my opinion, is, is still functioning uh, to do. So no matter who you are or what your mindset is or what you think your abilities are, uh, if you're coming in to this system, you're coming in to make this system uh, more effective uh, in, in, in what it was already designed to do. So um, that's what I look for when I look at our people is where does our allegiance lie? You know, and, and that's why our pledge to our UNIA flag is so important. We've been indoctrinated to, to know the pledge to the United States flag. Uh, if the song comes on and people start, you know, standing up, putting their hand on their chest, we unconsciously stand up, take our hats off, put our hand across the chest. And, you know, we may not say the words out loud, but you know, you know it in your head. Um, whereas, you know, if a, if a red, black and green flag was was on display, how many of our people could uh, uh, profess their allegiance. <clears throat> so um, for me, that's where it comes down to, you know, um, these individuals, in my opinion, are proudly representing uh, this system and, and that's what they want to be a part of. So I agree with Brother Art. Um, if you're going into the system, um, in my opinion, you wanna be a part of that system. You're not going in there to change it. Anybody else uh, have any comments? Tyree Nichols. Raise first. Uh, ho well, um, hold on, brother Sean, brother Art. I mean, not, not brother Art. Dr. Shams, go ahead. You first. Okay. Um, I heard that, you know, we shouldn't run from the police, but yes. take Armadou Diallo. They mistaken his keys to be a gun. And what about Eric Garner? He trying to reason with them. Not running nowhere, either one of them, Amadou Diallo or Eric Garner, and they, they choke hold and, and, and slam Eric Garner down to the ground and kill him too, and, and no running was involved. The only way we can um do anything about this is to level the playing field. I'm talking about total equality. Mm -hmm. if, if, if you kill one of them officers, you you will wind up on death row if they kill one of us unjustifiably. They should also be on death row of our people. Hmm. Peace and race first. Race first, um, brother Sean. Yes, With her husband and her infant child. And the staff department in Compton stopped her. There was a gang inside the staff department called the Executive. This is the mayor of Compton now. Mm -hmm. How is it that this is your boss and you don't even know who she is? What you say, Mr. President, I'm listening to what everybody else say, and it just baffles me that I say it again. We could discuss this until we turn blue in the face. Ain't nothing gonna change, nothing but budget. I know we, we might not be able to. But I say it funny. These people ain't gonna change. This system ain't gonna change. We can get our people into politics try to change the law. You know, we, we, we looking at it from our very eyes. You know? And we sit up there saying, what's going on? We know what's going on. How scared are you to say what's really going on? I don't you know, nobody, you know, individually, but I'm talking about us as a people of 40 million plus black people, melanated people in America. What are we really scared of? 
We done beg with these people. We done protest peacefully with these people. We done did everything that a human being could do. Mm-hmm. And what have we accomplished? What have we accomplished? It's just frustrating to 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 uh to just keep rotating the same old thing over and over and over. The records are played out. The needle is broken. Now, the Chinese people, I haven't been in, in, in Atlanta, but I, I'm from Harlem. So I know that it's a Chinatown in Manhattan. I know that there's a Chinatown in San Francisco and Los Angeles. There are no black police officers or white police officers patrolling Chinatown. Right. It looks like them. Why they got their own police officers, meaning that look like them, patrolling Chinatown? Because they got a country that's backing them up. Yes. We don't have nobody backing us up. So what I'm saying is this right here. I love for my people, my love for the flag. I got a tattooed in my left, in my left arm. Big as daylight. They let, you ain't, we, we don't have but one life. Mm-hmm. When are we going to protect that one life? That's all we have. We ain't got nothing else fresh to us. We can't be fresh to our children if we're cowards. We can sit there and talk about this all day long. But we need to come up with a strategy to deal with this system. Or we're gonna have to separate from this thing. Yes. Deal with it or to separate. It's nothing else. We see it. It's happening all over America. Tomorrow, it might be another black man get killed. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing. Oh, what are we gonna do? We're gonna have any energy to do? Just throwing it out there. You know, we just keep it 100. You know, not being pacified, watering down, you know, how we going to deal with the system itself. That's what we need to be talking about, how we going to deal with the system itself or to separate. Because even after a while, Martin Luther King got tired when he said, uh, oh, it's got Coca-Cola and blah, 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 blah. Next, next two days or three days, he's dead. Digging their pockets. So he stopped their money. This is a, America is a corporation. Mm-hmm. And I think President Woodrow, Woodrow Wilson sold America, they turned it into a corporation in 1930-something. And I would tell anybody, I believe wholeheartedly that when I go down to the border and look at that wall and it looks like something to keep King caught out of the movie, that's how big that wall is. It's not a, a chain link thing. That was on this big down there. So I think basically near future we be, all of us be dead and gone. America is gonna be one big in a thing. Because there's already a corporation right now. Race first. Race first. Um I understand. Um I guess that, that leads me to an, another question of because we believe the solution is let me see. Um, not necessarily separation or integration um, in a, in a pure sense, but it's doing for ourselves. So um, even if we, for those that wish to stay here, um, we should have something of our own uh, that we control, uh, like you know, like Chinatowns and things like that. And for those that wish to leave, um, we have relationships wherever uh, those individuals want to go. Um, so our solution from a Garvey standpoint would be uh, have something of our own, um, but also organizing. And this goes into the question of organizing. Um, we all, you know, the number one aim of the U- Universal Negro Improvement Association is all members of our race uh, included into this confraternity called the UNIA. Uh, I have been of the opinion of recent years that 
at least in the beginning, not everyone is going to be uh, in in the uh, you know be part of that body in the beginning. Um, they'll be you know over a period of time. Eventually, we'll have everybody. But my question is, what do we do with our brothers and sisters that? Uh, have formed an allegiance um, with the United States more so than with uh, the UNIA. Do we just cut them off and, you know, go without them? Um, I'm not saying we make them enemies or anything like that, but just from an organization standpoint, uh, do we, you know, don't waste time trying to convince them is, is kind of where I'm going. What should we do with our brothers and sisters uh, that are that have uh, pledged allegiance to um, the United States? Yes, uh, President John. Uh, I think Garvey gives the answer, uh, and Garvey's plan, my, my understanding, uh, was for us to go back home to Africa. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, not, not stay here. Uh, yeah, uh, go, go back to Africa. Mm -hmm. Now, I was surprised to learn, yeah, Garvey said, yeah, the, the Africans here in America, yes, uh, we should go back to Africa, but there were some Africans here Mm -hmm. that he he didn't want to, to go to take back to Africa. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he wanted them, the, the those that can't be helped uh, and, and those I guess would, uh, you, you're, you're, uh, you're saying uh, have given allegiance, you know, to this, you know, country. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, and, and, and they have a choice. Uh, the the right to self determination, and, and if they've determined they want to you know stay here and and integrate, you know, and this is their country and they, you know, uh, th their ancestors bled and, and and died and and this is my country and you know and, and my country too, uh, th that's their right to self determination, and, and I think Garvey realized he if he couldn't take everybody mm -hmm. and, and, and some that he didn't want over there, the, the, hmm. the, the, the thievery, you know, the, the, the ill intent or, or uh, whatever, uh, he, he didn't uh, want to, to take, you know, back to Africa. So you know, let those who want to stay here, that's their right. Uh, and, and, uh, and good. <laughs> Yeah, good luck to them and, and, and uh, race first. Race first. Thank you, Attorney Motep. So, yeah, excellent uh, point. Um, I got to keep that in mind. <clears throat> Anyone else? Um, any other comments on Tyree Nichols? Uh, race first. System? Race first. Yes. Uh, Pertaining to the whole situation, it's not just here in America that it's happening. It's happening on the continent of the diaspora, Africa as well, the continent of Africa. You have militaries over there that will turn on their own people for the European. Yeah. And remember, yeah, remember that whatever we do, we got to recognize people for who they are and what they do. I mean, after all, the revelation of the Holy Bible said that every man should be judged according to his deeds. That's deeds and actions, your behavior. Yes, that's what you be judged upon. Now, if you see a spade, call it a spade because it took the black Europeans and Arabs to enslave us. Without that co full cooperation from the countries over in the, over in the continent of Africa, starting with Morocco, which was at one time the main principal power in Africa, without that okay, they would have never been able to do it. Without cooperation from our own people, they would never have been able to do it, but they had the Blacks, Europeans, and Arabs, mm -hmm. you know? 
along with Spaniards, French, and the rest of them, you know, to, to work, to put our people into slavery and to make sure we go against each other with Willie Lynch. That's why I have on my website a link called Reverse Willie Lynch. People re really need to read that and study what it is because it might help. Peace and race first. Race first. Thank you, Dr. Shams. Um, if uh, no one else had any comment, I was going to go to a uh, message to the people to give some comments that Garvey gave uh, in regards to police. Um, and I also go to the lesson on man um, and talk about, uh, yeah, talk about how Garvey um, advises we prepare for uh, men. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Yeah, I like to take it back over what that, that, that was. That was Dr. Like, Sam. Yes. Was on, wasn't it? Correct. Yeah, I would like to say this much right here, like kind of add to what Dr. Sam was saying, was that you know, on a diaspora, you know, you can kill where you at. Yes. White folks, black folks kill black folks. But, you know, we kind of like make it dramatic when we see another melanated man kill another melanated man. You know, you have to look at it from the point of view of go to the diaspora and that, you know, the strongest tribe overtook the weaker tribe. So, this is not nothing, like I said, this is not nothing new. This is always been going on. The only thing about it right now is being televised. And we, you know, as a people, been miseducated intentionally. So when we see stuff like that, it's like a you know, it's just like a first thank you brother sean you brought in a good point and i'm glad you you did that because you brought in the aspect of tribes you know and and um melanated people uh have warring against each other is nothing new um but i have to ask you know and that's why we all you know our philosophy is race first um when we look at these men are they and 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 also in nature i would argue that uh, it's natural for a family to protect itself. You know, the the um, the the mother lions naturally protect the the children. The you know, the male lion of the pride protects its pride. Um, so when we look at these brothers, I have to ask the question: What tribe are they representing? Are they representing the tribe of melanated Africans, or are they representing the tribe of the fraternal order of police, <clears throat> you know, and I would argue that they are representing the tribe of the fraternal order of police. And that is, you know, reinforces the importance of the message of race first, um, because if we are going to work together, come together and acknowledge that we are family, we have to see each other as, as brothers and sisters first. You know, so before I am an engineer, uh, you know, before we are police officers or firefighters, um, we are Africans, you know, we are descendants of Africans. Before we are, you know, Democrats or Republicans, um, we should be, you know, Africans and, and identify with that first um, before we start getting into um, different religions or, or uh, political ideologies or different professions. Um, those things are what this society 
promotes for us to put first, you know? So when you introduce yourself to somebody, you know, I'm doctor such and such, you know, graduated from this and this, uh, but your identity is, is based upon um, this society rather than um, our origin. But um, yeah, I think that's something that we have to work on uh, for our people. Otherwise, you know, we will continue to, you know, um, have black skin, but be doing things that um, are not beneficial to our to our people. Yes, uh, attorney. Brother, yes, President John. Uh, your, your your comments uh, uh, recall one of my favorite uh, quotes by Johnny Cochran. Hmm. And Johnny Cochran said, and this was during the uh, O.J. Simpson trial, he said, I think race plays a part of everything in America, let, a, let alone this trial. Hmm. Now, uh, the brothers there beating uh, uh, the, excuse me, the Black police officers beating <laughs> the, the uh, brother. Yes, sir. There's, there's also a, a racial component. Okay. And, and that racial component is they would not have done it if it was a white mm. guy mm. that was there. Mm. Yeah. I, I didn't even think it's of that. First, it's first. Yeah. So, so uh, it's all about race. Hmm. Everything is about race. Yes, sir. Uh, race first. First. Um, all right. Let me jump with that. Let me uh, jump to the reading. Um, give Garvey's. I'm doing my best to give some comments that Garvey himself wrote uh, that may be applied to this situation to give us some guidance. Um, this comes from the Course of African Philosophy, uh, Message to the People, Course of African Philosophy, um, the book authored by Marcus Garvey. And we're in lesson eight titled The Social System. Uh, on page 70, uh, Garvey talks, begins to talk about or mentions police. So I'll, I'll read a couple paragraphs um, to give his comments and see how we can apply that today. Uh, so Garvey says, property in a community is evidence of your status in the society of the community. If you have no property, have something of substantial value. The police, the officials, and the government recognize property holders as citizens of first claim in an organized society. So um, that's one big takeaway um, when, you know, we should be property owners, we should be um, tax paying citizens uh, so that, you know, when we do get pulled over, that's the first thing, you know, hey, this is my, you know, information. Uh, I'm a taxpaying citizen, um, you know, property taxes, whatever, whatever. I'm paying your salary, basically. It's, it should be an unspoken understanding. Um, they are generally recorded to be identified. Let me see. Wait. The police officers, the officials, government recognize property holders, citizens for the first claim in an organized society. They are generally recorded to be identified. So property owners. Um, are, are recorded to be identified. Therefore, you must teach the people to own property and to be known and recognized uh, members of the community. Um, so that's another thing that would help us. Um, not It's not 100% going to save us, but if we are prominent members in the community, um, you know, um, tutors, um, you know, helping out at, at uh, feeding programs, but if we're, you know, seeing if the police officers are seeing us in the streets, you know, helping them with their work, you know, feeding homeless people, um, you know, working with uh, people that are addicted, um, you know, trying to, to help people financially, we will have a relationship, 
uh, with those officers such that when we get pulled over, um, they know us as, oh, you you know, y'all are the ones that are, you know, feed, feed the community on the weekend. So we should have a good relationship and a good reputation uh, that will help us. Uh, continuing, Garvey says, always adopt a friendly attitude towards the police in your community because the police is that civil body of officials who are supposed, and I always got to uh, highlight when Garvey uses that word, but they're supposed to protect the citizens and see that their rights are not infringed upon. That doesn't mean that that happens all the time, but uh, this is a system. We live in a society. Uh, the police force, the fraternal order of the police is an institution. Uh, so that institution has um, directives, uh, you know, in order, because the police was created by the society. Uh, so in addition to, you know, slave catching and things like that, they still have an obligation to hold, uh, you know, to, to maintain peace. Uh, and um, we should be in alignment with that. You know, we should, we should want peace as well. So always adopt a friendly attitude towards the police in your community because the police is that civil body of officials who are supposed to protect the citizens and see that their rights are not infringed upon. So um, until we as men and women step up and say that, you know, we are going to police our own communities. Um, and if we, you know, and as Garvey also says this, if we don't create our own institutions, so if we're not creating an institution to replace the police department, then by default, we consider the, the current police department to be superior. Um, you know, that, that's something that he says, but if you don't, uh, and, and, and legality is a, a silence implies co consent. So if you're not objecting to what's going on, if you're not presenting an alternative to what's going on, um, you basically say that you consent uh, to what's going on. <clears throat> you should always welcome the police. The police are never, and that's, you know, something, yeah, this was back in Garvey's time, uh, but this is his position. The police are never the public enemy, but the public protector says you should help the police to maintain order because if the community loses its peace, you will have riots and probably bloodshed. No peaceful citizen wants to be caught in such a dangerous state of public affairs. Um, so those are Garvey's comments specifically uh, mentioning police and how, uh, what they're supposed to do and how we should interact with them. Um, any questions, comments before I go to the next section? So, race first. Race first, Dr. Shams. I could see that, you know, that we shouldn't go out and do disorder or anything else. But the thing with that, if, they, if we really want to have that, then we're going to need equal, total equal rights all the way across the board. In other words, what happens to one of us happens to them too, especially if we haven't done anything wrong. The brothers, both of the brothers that that they killed, that they have killed and are killing, they they have done very little, if not anything, wrong. Yes. And if the police want to kill us innocently like that, when they do, just like one of them, you know, they put us on death row. They should go to the death row to and be put to death in front of the people. Yes, Peace sir. Race. Let's stop that then. Peace race first. Yes. The, I agree. Um, what we have to understand, uh, as Brother Sean mentioned about China or other nations, um, the reasons why you don't see these things happening to other nations is because other nations will hold the United States um you know, police system accountable. Uh, so when it comes, you know, time for uh, electing, you know, mayors or uh, appointing police chiefs and things like that, um, these nations will make their voices heard um, such that they get the results that we want. Uh, one of the things that we failed over time is our ability to hold our public officials accountable. Um, and, and I think that again goes back to organization um, but yeah we have to create that's what the unia is partially about is creating a global body 
uh, such that whenever any of our people are misrepresented or mistreated, the UNIA um, becomes the representing body to say that, you know, this is not right. Um, we need to make sure that um, these individuals are held accountable, you know, but we don't really have that uh, as a race. So uh, we depend upon, you know, Ben Crump, um, who's, you know, a civil rights activist, but his allegiance is also with the United States, you know. Um, so we're asking a representative of the United States to hold the United States accountable. Um, and that's not what other nations do. <clears throat> so, all right, um, let me read a little bit on the lesson on man, because uh, this talks about the expectations of men, um, what we can expect from them, and, and you know, why we shouldn't be surprised uh, about their behavior. Lesson 11 says, man, because of his sin, which caused him to have fallen from his highest state of spiritual cleanliness to the level of a creature who acts only for his own satisfaction by the gift of free will must be regarded as a dangerous creature. When he wants to be good, uh, when he wants to, he can be good. Otherwise, he is generally bad. In dealing with him, you must calculate for his vices and his damnable evils. He is apt to disappoint you at any time. Therefore, you cannot wholly rely on him as an individual. Always try to touch him with the hope of bringing out that which is good, but be ever on your guard to experience the worst that is in him because he is always in conflict with himself as between good and evil. Um, uh, but um, he even goes back, Cain slew Abel for his success, Jacob, Jacob robbed Esau of his birthright, and down through the ages of human history, man has been robbing, exploiting, and murdering man for gain. Therefore, do not completely trust him, but watch him. Uh, when he is good, try to keep him good, although he may not always remain good. Uh, but in a sense, Garvey teaches us to expect the worst from men. Uh, men and women. Um, so with these brothers or with these uh, black men in police, with these officers, um, we should expect the worst from them, um, you know, and, and we should find a level of comfort in that. But we should still uh, behave accordingly, but we shouldn't be surprised when they act the way we see them act. Um, the Garvey also adds, offers a solution to uh, our man's nature of, of potential evil, and that's in education. Uh, he says the present system of education is calculated to subjugate the majority and elevate the minority. The system was devised and has been promulgated by agents of the minority. This system was carefully thought out by those who desire to control others for their benefit and to the disadvantage of the others, to the extent that the others would not immediately rise into happiness and enjoyment of life simultaneously and equal with them. So they basically forced an uneven playing field. And as we talk about the system and how the system work, how the system is designed and, you know, um, and this is, this is, this is that system. Uh, it was designed uh, to benefit a few and to subjugate the many. It was never originally intended to make all the people equal at the same time. Even more so, it was not intended to elevate the darker races to the immediate standard of the white races. The minority sprung from the white race to establish the system of education. Therefore, all textbooks, all general literature are colored to suit the particular interests of those who establish the system of education and the group they represent as against the interest of others whom they did not want to immediately elevate to their standard. Um, let me see, where does where he get to? There's a limited amount of education. There we go. Therefore, it is necessary for the Negro to be additionally educated or re-educated after he has imbibed the present system of education. So when we talk about these officers, these officers are products of the American education system. They are products of the Memphis Police Department training system. Um, and until we offer, until we re-educate, uh, or until they go through a process of re-education, 
um, we shouldn't expect anything else from them. The best way to educate him, uh, the best way to educate him racially, the best way to do this is to educate him racially in the home, meeting hall or his own club. So um, individuals should be doing this in our homes uh, and we should be doing this like we're doing right now uh, in meetings and clubs and things like this. And as we can all see, uh, the, the numbers of our people that pursue this type of education is very low. Um, so the ones that have acquired that type of education is even lower. Um, let me see, uh, where he will be put under the closest scrutiny and analysis of what appears to be education. So hold on, the best way to do this is to educate him racially in his home meeting hall or his own club, where he will be put under the closest scrutiny and analysis of what appears to be education as coming from other people. So uh, we have to come into these type of spaces uh, where we can be questioned on this education that we've been given. You know, if somebody says that they have a doctorate in philosophy, you know, okay. Um, so, you know, who, where'd you get that doctorate? Um, what type of philosophers have you studied? You know, what's the origin? What did, what did you learn was the origin of philosophy? Is it Greece or is it Africa? You know, um, and that's where we start to re-educate uh, our people under the closest scrutiny or analysis of what appears to be education as coming from other people because their system of education may not completely fit into the Negro's ideas of his own preservation. Uh, I'll stop there, but um, Garvey wrote this book, or no, Garvey created this text, this course in 1937. It was published in 1985. Um, these suggestions and lessons they still apply. Um, we're in 2023. We're talking about a brother being unjustly killed by the police. Uh, and I can say that everything that I just read um, applies and can be used, uh, could have been used to prevent this situation. And I, I'll say that it can be used to prevent this in the future. Um, but those are my thoughts. I'm gonna get off the soapbox and open the floor, uh, questions, comments, uh, and then we'll go into member share um, before we close out. Race first. Race first, Dr. Shams. Yes. No matter what our analysis might be, whether we want it to be great or just good enough to get by, we must always realize that there are two entities that exist in this world. One lower, way lower than, than the other. The other one is the most high on, on the right side, right? Yes, so, okay, there is both good and evil that exists in the world and evil people do exist, not meaning any good. Once we understand that, we can begin to work on things, but stop. We need to stop looking at our people as being all angels because there is a such thing as a black devil and, and black neo Nazis as well. Because that's who that's who will influence them to do these type things. The, the neo Nazi movement, the black ones especially. Peace and race first. Race first. Thank you, Dr. Shams. Yes, you are absolutely correct. Um, and going through uh, Garvey's teachings, he does, because he uses the Bible as a foundation. Um, so I would agree the, art, the, the battle is, it's not a racial battle. It is a spiritual battle between good and evil. Um, however, Garvey's approach to that battle, when it comes to, you know, who's going to be on our side and on our team, um, Garvey uh, has, has given us, you know, our history and let us know that, um, you know, well, he, he's not the only one, but we are the first people to inhabit the world. So if it is down to anyone to restore our people back to, um, a level of good and remove evil, uh, he chooses to focus on the original, uh, man and woman, uh, his descendants, his family. Um, and once we clean up our people, 
clean up our race uh, and make our race more good than evil, um, then we can we can do our part um, when it comes to the the human race uh, and and stand up um, and straighten our backs as Negroes as Africans so that we um, see other races eye to eye um, and not as inferior and, and superior. Anyone else before we go to member share? All right, all right. Um, briefly, before we go to member share, um, let me see, let me find. I uh, just wanna remind everyone uh, to pay dues. So I'm gonna just do this briefly because um, we record this. So um, it's not just for y'all, but for <clears throat> individuals that see the video later. Um, but yes, we need everyone to pay their dues. Um, that's what this is about, organization. We come together, we say, you know, we believe in these ideals, we believe in these principles. We want to work together to achieve uh, these goals. And we want to, you know, be leaders and officers in the movement. That's the first step. Second step is making that financial commitment, um, creating this uh, this uh, cooperative economic structure um, and, and combining our resources. Um, we don't ask for a lot. It's $3 a month, $46 a year for active members and a $10 joining fee. So $10, $56 for your first year. But um, we got we to gotta be serious about this. Um, if we as a people, if we as leaders, if we as adults, um, supposedly we've been studying this information for 20 and 30 years, if we can't, you know, uh, acquire, you know, the excess resources and contribute these excess resources, uh, what can we expect from those that come after us? Those that are just finding out about this stuff today, you know, how can we expect them to make a contribution when we have, you know, 30 years of knowledge? We've seen, you know, we walk with uh, Dr. Khaled, you know, we've, we've studied the, the, the teachings of Malcolm X, um, you know, Marcus Garvey for, for over 100 years, and we aren't um, contributing. So let's not be hypocritical. Um, and I'm just encouraging everyone. And, and you will want to. We're going to get to the point where, you know, I'm not going to have to ask people no more. And, and, and I, I just want everyone to take advantage of this time in this space of being one of the first, well, not one of the first, but before we get big, you know, um, being one of the day ones, one of the original uh, contributors and, and doing it for the right reasons and not because it's popular. So uh, make sure everyone pays your dues, uh, go ahead and pay your dues for the year, knock it out. Uh, we don't have to worry about it no more. And uh, we can we can make a lot of progress. Uh, we've been using our funds just to give everyone a heads up. We've been using our funds to rent out, uh, the Omen Alegrio Afrocentric Museum. Uh, we've been there since November, um, November, December, January, and we will be there February as well. Uh, we'll stop in February and then we'll prepare for high executive council. So, uh, all funds and donations and dues will go towards, we'll be going towards, uh, high Executive Council, uh, which will be in April. So, all right. I think that's enough. I think y'all understand what the ask is. We are grown-ups. Um, everybody's been on this call a couple times, so y'all should be used to that. And with that, we will go to, well, any questions or comments uh, before we go to member share? All right. All right, we will go to member share. Uh, brothers, we know we um, have to be good listeners. So we allow our sisters to go first. I think we have one. Sister. Yeah, I, I got a question and comment. President Ross Marvin, go ahead. Yes, greetings, President John and greetings family. Uh, when I was the president and uh, I don't think we hosted HEC, I don't remember us hosting HEC, but we did host the convention, Division 421, in 2012, mm -hmm. we had a convention here in Atlanta, and it wasn't the local division responsibility to pay for the cost 
of the facility. The okay. parent body covered that cost. Okay. So I was wondering if um, a question can be directed to the parent body and ask them why does Division 421 have to cover the cost of the HEC when this is a, a, a uh, parent body function, not a local division function? Uh, excellent question, President Ross Martin. Thank you for uh, bringing that up. I spoke with Secretary General yesterday. We had a, a good call um, yesterday morning, and she was asking um, what expenses we had, what expectations we had. Uh, and you are correct. Um, she, she say, um, that the parent body will reimburse the division. Um, but we will be responsible for the upfront. Okay, so the parent body will reimburse, reimburse the division for the expenses. Well, for the for the uh, business location, so for renting out the facility, they will cover. Um, I asked about food. I thought they would help us with the food, but the food will be covered by uh, the participants. So it won't. I, I was planning on. I thought we would like cater. Uh, and, and provide food for everyone that came, but it looks like each individual will have to pay for their meals, lunch, and dinner. Okay. So they will reimburse us on the location? Yes, sir. Excellent. Yes, sir. Uh, but I sent out a text yesterday to our executive officers, um, and Baba James will be helping me with it. Um, we we got to get a final number on how much we're going to be charged because we haven't gotten that number yet for right now we're looking at the evening of Wednesday all day Thursday all day Friday and then uh, pretty much all day Saturday as well okay sounds good all right any other questions before we go to membership all right uh, thank you, everyone, for being patient. Um, Sister Aziza, Attorney Emotep, is Sister Aziza, does she have anything for member share? She wanted to share with the family. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Uh, unfortunately, this is one of the saddest topics that we've had to cover. And unfortunately, it probably won't be the last one. I I know we just keep saying the same thing over and over and over. What can we do? What can we do? And yes. really, we all know what we can do, but it's just putting it all in into progress. Yes. It takes a community. It's not one person and one organization. It's everybody. Yes, ma'am. Everybody. These are your children, your your sons, your brothers, your uncles, and even females as well. You know, there's, there's no specific one. They would have tackled the same if it would have been a female to me. But, you know, the whole thing that what goes around comes around, these brothers are going to see it. Hmm. They are going to see it because there are prisoners now just waiting for them to come in there. Yes, ma'am. Race first. Race first. Yes, but that's also, uh, Sister Ziza, that's another interesting dynamic of, of this whole thing and the importance of race first. Um, because when we look at uh, Rodney King's situation versus Tyree Nichols, um, the Rodney King officers were acquitted, I believe is the right word, but they weren't charged. You know, um, the white officers that beat up a black man in 1991 were not charged. And then the, the, the black officers that beat up and kill a black man in 2023, they are charged. Um, so I do think that they need to be held accountable uh, and, and punished for their crimes. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's more black people, you know, um, being punished is, is only thing. Uh, and, and it hurts that the cops that, um, beat up Rodney King were not held accountable. Thank you, sister Aziza. Um, were there any other sisters on the call before we go to our brothers? Any other sisters before we go to our brothers? 
All right. Um, when we go, uh, we want to go through our brothers. Uh, I'll. I want to hit our uh, officers and, and elders first. Um, first, uh, let me see. Then bring in Attorney Emotep. Greetings, Attorney Emotep. Greetings, uh, President John. Uh, a couple of things. Now, uh, with regards to the white officers beating Rodney King, mm -hmm. uh, they were charged okay. uh, with uh, federal uh, offenses. Okay. Uh, and they were found not guilty. Hmm. Yeah. And that's why they had, that's when they had the riots. Yeah, the the the, the uh, uh, rebellion. Mm, got you. I like that. Y yes, y as a result that, that not guilt those not guilty verdicts. Right. Yeah, and and, and uh, uh, that incident uh, on the streets of L.A. They were yelling. I, I saw a videotape. They were yelling. Africans unite. They, it wasn't African Americans unite. They were saying Africans unite, mm. and, and and that was uh, there during the uh, LA re rebellion. I think that was uh, I may be mistaken. Ninety one, ninety two. You absolutely absolutely right. Um, so so yeah the. He was beat in 91, but the outbreaks didn't happen until 92. So that was, you're absolutely correct. Excellent uh, point. April and May of 92. Yeah. We, we didn't, we didn't um, you know, tear up the streets uh, when the video came out, but when the, uh, the court ruling was made and the officers were deemed not guilty, um, that's when people took to the street. So um, excellent point, uh, attorney. Yeah. yeah, it was a jury trial and, and they moved it out of uh, LA County to right. the White County. Yeah, and, mm. and I'm thinking it was a, I don't know if it was an all white jury or not. Uh, found, um, yeah, the officer's not guilty. My, another point I wanted to make, uh, there's a lawsuits uh, being initiated across the country and I got a brief uh, statement here uh, from this book uh, called How, How Toxic is Black Hair Care? Hmm. And it reads, uh, hair relaxers are used to straighten the natural curl pattern in the hair. However, most hair relaxers contain toxic chemicals such as formaldehyde, metals, phospholites, and parabens, which are associated with a higher risk of cancer, particularly hormone-sensitive ones. Manufacturers generate upwards of $700 million in sales for hair relaxers in 2021 alone. Yet manufacturers fail to warn women about the chemical dangers in hair relaxers despite studies dating back to 2011 that identified this risk. It is, it's known in the industry that hair relaxers are used by the black community more than by any other race. Thus, this makes the news of this study completely alarming and shocking for all users of hair relaxers, especially those in the black population. Black people make up about 13% of the U.S. population, but by one estimate, African-American spending accounts for as much as 22% of the $42 billion a year personal care products market. Today, uh, the defendants market their hair relaxer products to African-Americans consumers across the United States and the world, reinforcing Europe, Europe, Eurocentric beauty standards mm -hmm. and marketing 
uh, that focus heavily on branding and slogans that reinforce straight hair as the standard. However, unbeknownst to consumers, these products fail to perform safely and increase the risk of cancer. The hair relaxers are unreasonably dangerous when used in a manner as intended and mm. to an extent beyond that which would be contemplated by the ordinary consumer. Uh, so, so a lot of black women, this, it's, this is a mass uh, tort, uh, I guess you could, you, you could say uh, there, there's class action lawsuits across the country uh, women, African women are getting uh, over an ovarian cancer uh, and, and other uh, cancers of that lot from uh, using these products to straighten their hair to uh, respond to uh, the pressure they're under to look like uh, European uh, women. And, and we see the black male used to do it. We, we used to do it. It was the, the process, uh, hair to straighten the hair. And that was Malcolm X, the, the movie there, uh, when he was conking his hair and uh, the water ran out and he had to put his hair, his head, it was so hot. He had to put his head you know, in the toilet, yep. you know, to cool, cool, you know, cool his hair. We used to, all the singers, uh, 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 all of them, the entertainers had to straighten their hair. James uh, Brown, yeah, James Brown, all, all of them. Uh, 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 you name it. Uh, the, Sam Cooke was one of the first ones that stopped, mm -hmm. and, and uh, uh, you know th that was good. So unfortunately, uh, the African females are still under that pressure uh, that they have to do it, and, and it's killing them. Uh, I back in the day, I thought it was thyroid uh, cancer they they were getting from straightening their hair, and and Dick Gregory uh, used to t talk about that, uh, but now it looks like now the chemicals they're they're using apparently it looks like it's even worse uh, that you're getting reproductive uh, cancer uh, problems uh, there and. Uh, so that's uh, all I wanted to share. Thank you. Race first. Race first. Thank you, uh, Attorney Motep. Yeah, you said something caught my attention. You said it's dangerous when used as intended. <laughs> that threw me off. I thought you were going to say it's dangerous um, when used incorrectly. But but again, going back to systems and how things are designed, you know, and the purpose for, for things, you know, when used as intended when used as it's designed, when following the instructions, um, this product is, is dangerous to the user. Um, uh, but again, um, you also mentioned Eurocentric, you know, um, I think that's another battle that Garvey speaks about um, when it comes to the mindset of our people, the, the hearts of our people. Uh, it's a battle of Eurocentric versus Afrocentric. You know, will we consider the Afrocentric uh, beauty standards to be ideal or, or are we pursuing Euro, Eurocentric beauty standards? Um, and that's the same, not only for beauty, but, um, you know, uh, character, uh, ethics, morals, um, you know, are we following the European or Eurocentric standard for these ideals or um, are we uh, seeking the highest Afrocentric uh, ideals? Thank you, Attorney Emotep. Uh, um, next. Uh, excuse me, President yes. John. Yes, I just want to uh, say something about the um, uh, hair that we're purchasing now, the weaves. Yes. And the eyelashes that look like, you know, windshield wipers. And you know, the people that are benefiting from this are the Asians. Oh, yeah. We're not oh, making yeah. no money off of this. We spent a fortune giving our money 
to the Asians. We don't have anything going for us, not mm -hmm. anything. And you see these women with purple hair that's all the way down to the ankles, you know, is I, I'm just, who are we trying to pretend to be? Yes. You can't go to no job interview with purple hair and and think you're gonna walk out of that. I mean, we're having limitations. You know, I'm not saying that you you got to do all of this, but in reason, presentable. Yes. Natural. Race first. Yeah, we at I know I remember there was a time when you know, we, our people, our women were the beauty standard, um, you know, our, the bodies, uh, the tan skin, um, you know, that's what uh, the other society was pursuing, you know, and now it's, it's like, we're copying the copier, you know, they, they copied us and now we're copying them as they copy us. I don't, I don't understand that. Uh, but yes, we, we, and uh, as far as I was trying to find um, an article to show how we spend money, um, but I know that when we talk about, you know, the, the black spending power, black American spending power, I think we're up to 2 trillion now, but we spend, I want to say, I know it's millions at least, but I want to say billions on um, hair and beauty products. Um, men, you know, we spend billions on um alcohol and tobacco um but you know as sister aziza said we're not producing any of these things so um this is us voluntarily empowering other cultures you know and nobody's forcing us to do it nobody's putting a gun to our head um we're not in chains um but we voluntarily do this and and part of it garvey teaches is due to propaganda and how things are presented and marketed to us uh but still as adults as men and women as leaders of our communities um, as teachers of the next generation uh, we have to be aware of the obstacles that they put in front of us to slow us down and make sure that um, the next generation is aware and has alternatives um, so that they don't you know, go through the same mistakes that we did. Um, all right, let's keep it moving. Uh, bring in uh, next brother, um, President Ross Marvin. Are you there? It looks like your mic is disconnected. Uh, I was trying to get to him. I don't think he can hear us right now. Yeah, yeah I'm here. Okay, greetings, President Ross Marvin. You, you have the floor. Yeah, greetings, greetings. Uh, yeah, I think uh, what you the comments you read about Marcus Garvey say we're not going to take everybody to Africa. Well, you know those cops them that uh, did what they did to Tyree kill him. They, they we don't want those type of people in Africa because they'll do the same thing to us when we get to Africa. Yes, sir. You know, so uh, they they just you know brainwashed still you know mm -hmm. because one of those cops should have stopped, stepped in and said, no, we can't do this, it's a black man, you know what I'm saying? But they, they're just completely gone, completely gone. We can't count on them at all. Um, but yes, they should be on, I agree with Dr. Shams as far as, you know, a tooth for a tooth and an eye for eye. If they killed one of us, then they sh should get the death penalty charge, you know? Yes. So they, but uh, we see how it's gonna turn out, but it never turns out good in our favor. So yes. that's all I have to share right now. Yes, excellent. Um, yes, great point. Um, one, you know, one brother, uh, one, you know, officer, you know, I gotta be careful about who we consider brothers at this time. One officer could have stopped that whole thing and it reminded me of a quote, uh, from Edmund Burke, a quote I used to remember a, a lot. The only thing necessary for evil to triumph in the world is that good men do nothing. Um, so, you know, either there weren't any good men uh, around Brother Tyree or those good men uh, did nothing. Uh, either way, that's unacceptable. Um, and then you said something else at the end, President Ross. Uh, 
shoot. Not everybody is gonna make it. I can't remember. But yeah. Um yeah, I can't remember what she said. I was gonna say something else. Raise first. Raise first. One second, one second, Dr. Shans. But um, yeah, and if you look at the pictures, you know, it's almost identical. Um, as as someone mentioned, um, police have a tactic when they get you down to surround you, you know. So uh I think this picture only has four officers, but this one has five, even though five were arrested. Um it's it's sadly um a very uh, similar image of of you know five four or five um, uniformed officers um beating one of our brothers uh dr shams you, you were gonna say something uh yes um brother ross marvin can reaffirm what i'm saying now uh, I believe what he last day he said was that he believed in the eye for an eye and the two for a tooth. I'm going to carry it a little further. How about a life for a life? You know, because if you if you kill one of them officers, if them officers die by your hands, they're not going to think twice about putting you on death row. But they kill us and they get away with it. They kill they they don't kill the ones doing wrong. They kill the ones innocent who haven't done anything, you know? But eye for eye, 242 fly for life, according to Holy Quran. Yeah, that should be that should be written into the law of the USA for police officers killing innocent people. Peace of race first. Race first. And I remember it now. Um, thank you, Dr. Sham. You helped me rem remember. Um, we have to create that nation um, that is demanding justice for our people. So when the time comes for a trial uh, for these officers, we should have, you know, there should be a UNIA delegation uh, there on behalf of um, Tyree Nichols and the entire global uh, African race that's demanding justice uh, for our brother, you know, and and that's that's one of the points that I was going to make about why we don't see this happening to other races, other cultures. Um, they make sure that uh, their voices are heard and that um, individuals are held accountable. So. You know, this is in Memphis. Um, this is out of the jurisdiction of Atlanta. Um, but, you know, it sh you know, we should still be building wherever our people are. There should be a, a division in Memphis. If not, there should be some form of a Black organization um, that can hold the American justice system accountable um, outside of just being a representative of the American justice system. So, uh, and until we get there, I don't think we'll be respected uh, as people in this land. All right. Um, next person I want to go to. Uh, uh, brother Art, you were on in the beginning. Uh, greetings, Brother Art. How you doing? Race first. Race first, Brother Art. Uh, I had something to share about the uh, the raid that was done uh, in San Francisco and, I mean, in St. Louis mm -hmm. and Florida. Mm -hmm. um, the, the four people's houses who were raided, uh, they're going to be put up on trial. Um, and they're asking for support from... Uh, the diaspora. Um, the group is the African People's Socialist Party. Um, the uh, they had a they also had was in the process of buying a a church down in Florida, and last week the church was set on fire. Mm -hmm. um, and outside of the church, they had a, a UNIA flag, and that was set on fire. Um, so we got to be vigilant, man. They're trying to hit all our organizations. 
So we got to keep our eyes open, eyes and ears open. Race first. Race first. Uh, thank you, Brother Art. You kind of, you, you know, that comment about the flag being burned, uh, that pisses me off quite a bit. Um, particularly one in our pledge to the UNI flag, commit my body, mind, and spirit to what? The protection, defense, and security of what? Of the red, the black, and the green. Um, and this is, you know, part of the reason why um, the, the what, did, what did I do with that? I'm, I'm sorry. Hold on. Um, representation of that flag has to be legitimate. Um, because in my opinion, that is, uh, that's a, I'm trying to get the words right without saying the wrong thing, but that is a declaration of a conflict. Um, if someone does that, um, and we should have representatives, um, in place, you know, to defend when these things happen. And that's part of the problem, you know, as I said, when we have individuals that go out and wave the flag, uh, represent the flag, um, but they don't really know how to defend the flag. Um, it makes the, the, the legitimate representatives um, look as though, uh, look cowardice, I guess is the best word I can say. Um, but um, that should be dealt with. That should be dealt with swiftly uh, and 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 justly. Uh, but at the end of the day, we have to be legitimate representatives and know how to protect, defend, and secure um, anything that we put that flag on. <clears throat> and if you know, race first. I understand that. Race first. I was sharing the wrong thing. <laughs> I meant to be sharing this. I was supposed to. Be, I thought I was sharing this. All right, thank you, brother Art. Uh, anything else before I go to the next brother? Nah, that's it right now. Thank you, brother Art. Um, For sure. Uh, next brother will bring in uh, our division colonel, uh, Baba James. And Baba James, if you would, uh, we had a legion call this past Friday. Um, if you could, would you please share with our membership uh some updates um obviously nothing too sensitive i don't think there was anything too sensitive discussed on the call but um please give our members an update on uh, the legion call as well as anything you have for member share uh greetings and race first family i want to say hello to everybody and um uh, to let you know that as a legion we have decided on a a uniform <laughs> Uh, those male members of our UNI division are all currently legion, legionnaires. Yes, sir. And our uniform currently includes a dicky top and a dicky bottom in the color of black. The yep. patches concerning uh, our UNI division are forthcoming, and we will be distributing them once parent body approves all. Uh, messaging uh, for our um, for our patches and such. Yes, sir. I'd also like to let everybody, anybody on the call, know who they wants to be involved in the executive uh, uh, high executive council meeting to uh, let us know how you want to help. We need help with the uh, food prep. We need help with security. We need help with the entertainment. We need help. <laughs> all around so if you could imagine all of the all of the things that are going to go on for those for those days those are all spaces that we need to fill and we want to do everything we can to make sure our urna members from other cities and states are are, are safe yes sir as always uh, members who want to communicate beyond our uh beyond our mass meeting are more than welcome to join the garvey worldwide website so that they might be able to use the chat functions and continue our planning for uh, race first search circumstance for ourselves and self-determination. You know, this is our opportunity to put those practices in place that make things different. You know, not all of our children 
grow up knowing that you shouldn't put hands on people that look like you. And only when we start at that particular level and that lesson is learned by the time they decide to be a police officer, I wait have a chance not to have these type of circumstances that plague our, our society anymore, black people. Race first. Race first. Uh, thank you, Bob James. Yes. Um, again, I, I, you know, I don't know the solution. Um, I don't know the answer. Um, but leaning on my ancestor, um, um, the right excellent Marcus Mosiah Garvey, I would have to believe that the solution is somewhere in education. Um, so uh, we have to be building and supporting institutions for education. Uh, and with that being said, we are wrapping up our, uh, let me see, I think I got it up here somewhere. We are in the process of wrapping up our officers training. Um, the book that I touched on, Course of African Philosophy, Message of the People. Um, you know, it's going to take education and retraining on several different levels, several different aspects. So uh, financially, um, you know, mathematics, science, uh, health, um, diet, all of these things, you know, we need to develop our own uh, education plans for. Um, this, off, you know, the officer's training is just an overall, you know, what Garvey left behind for the leaders of the UNIA. But this is not, this should not be the only uh, form of education uh, that we provide. And, and you know, I know we're, we're still going to focus on Race First by Tony Martin, Philosophies and Opinions by Marcus Garvey. But again, we've got to expand our uh, training and education uh, to all aspects um, that affect our people. Uh, but if we expect, if we want to see any change, uh, you know, I, I know Gandhi's famous for that quote, be the change that you want to see in the world. Um, but Garvey's got something, he mentioned something uh, similar to that before Gandhi's time. Uh, but, you know, if, if we want to see something, if we expect something to be done or created, uh, we have to create it ourselves. So thank you, Bob James. Uh, and yeah, in regards to the Dickies uniforms, uh, that was considered something that's easy and affordable uh, and accessible. So it's not our last final design. Um, but something to get uh, our legion to be somewhat uniform in, in different cities and as well as within the cities, um, the Dickies uniform was, was selected. So uh, any questions, comments on um, anything Bob James mentioned? And yes, we do need support for High Executive Council. A lot of work to do, but uh, it's going to be a very good, very big, very important meeting. Um, and I'm excited about uh, the attention that it'll bring to the city and the local division. All right. Uh, Dr. Shams, I think you already mentioned you, you had a, did you want to say anything else, uh, Dr. Shams? I know you jumped in for a second. Okay. Uh, raise first. Raise first. Yes, it's as simple as this. It, remember that there's always two entities in this world. That's good and evil, and they always fight one another. Sometimes good overtakes bad. Sometimes bad overtakes good. But if the if the playing field is not equal, then it's like us being a people who have no rights. We should demand the same thing from them. Our caretakers, so called, you know, as they expect from us. You know, if they're going to put one of us on death row for one of them, then they should go on death row for killing an innocent one of us. All right. I just want to get out on top of that, my website again. I thank everybody who's been going to the website. That's good. And if you could drop off some, some kind of donation, it, it might help me stay above float because I'm trying to get away from this European system the government, the jobs, whatever, and trying to make my own way, you know? That's the best thing we all could do. That's why, I guess that's why we had the website idea in the first place, 
along with searching for our people's skills, talents, and intelligence. My website is located on the internet at not helpful USA legislations people dot brave sites dot com. I put it in the chat also. That's not helpful USA legislations people dot brave sites dot com. Brave sites is a good company if anybody want to um, build a website on the uh, on anything. You know, I, I would like to ask just for just for helping with, with some of the promotion, being that they had given me leeway this this far, you know, and not to be charged. Um, you know, go there and make make a website. Go right there and make a website, you know. But the website is it, coming up now, but the website is uh not helpful USA legislations people dot bracesites dot com and there's all my contact information there peace and race first yes sir thank you thank you dr shams race first um i think there's only one other brother and then i'll give some closing comments uh brother sean are you still there brother sean uh was there any other brothers that i missed any brothers that I missed? Any sisters that I missed? No sisters, no brother. Okay. Um, brief closing slide. Um, I know many of us are aware, some may not be aware of what today is and what's going on today. Um, as far as entertainment, um, it may be a reason as to why uh, we don't, I mean, I think our attendance is actually pretty good. Um, you know, we get, we, we get the same brothers, uh, consistently, same brothers and sisters consistently. Um, but as far as why we don't have a lot of new members in today, um, it's, you know, <clears throat> there's some things going on, uh, in the American entertainment sphere. And one thing that I just want to touch on Again, when we talk about trajectory and the the where our people are headed, where our mentality is, where our uh, allegiance is, where our resolve, you know, where is our courage, our our determination, our fortitude? Um, I am discouraged. You know, I I see it getting worse. I feel like we are becoming a weaker uh, people. And an example that I give is. The, the Montgomery boys, ah, bus boycott of the 1950s uh, and comparing that to the, 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 the so-called uh, NFL uh, boycott that we as a people did in 2016. Um, and we have to be better about this uh, boycotting. To my knowledge, I heard uh, Dr. Carr, Dr. Greg Carr. Um, some of y'all may know him. He's a professor at Howard University. But he mentioned um, the dynamic of boycotting um, related to protesting and the extremes of protesting where we start tearing things up. And, um, you know, he said that these two things have to work together. You know, um, if we don't, um, if, if, wait, let me see how he said this, hold on. Um, but they have to be related. So if, if the, the boycott is not respected, that's when we um, go to extremes. Um, but we should not be, you know, just going out tearing stuff up um, when we haven't even done a boycott. And we have to ask ourselves as a people, you know, when is the last time we had a serious boycott, you know? Um, and I remember when the things happened with the NFL, <clears throat> I was very excited at that time. I'm young, you know, I'm early thirties and I'm thinking, oh man, this is, this is our chance, you know, to, to honor our ancestors that, uh, and not, you know, not, not just ancestors because a lot of people are still alive, but elders that went through the bus boycott and, to show them, you know, that we have the resilience as well. But that never really turned out to be anything. Um, within a matter of months, you know, a lot of our people were back to uh, supporting 
the NFL. Um, but, you know, we just have to ask ourselves what is, you know, when we will, how we fight. You know, we always talk about when we're at a war, um, but what are we doing in the war? There's a difference between being in a war and being warred upon. You know, being warred upon is, is when you you have no response. And that's the way I see our people uh, right now. We don't really have any um, legitimate uh, response, any organized uh, threat, you know, and I don't mean that in a, in a physical way, but a financial threat, you know, where we come together and we get serious and we say, you know, we're not going to support this, you know, whether it's Easter or Christmas, um, you know, 4th of July, it just seems like we as a people cannot wait uh, to give our money um, to this system. And I was just at the grocery store today. And that's why this is up here. Like I was just going to get some drinks, but grocery store packed. And I didn't even realize why, but then when I get in the line, uh, I immediately realized it because brother, I said, who you got for the, who you, you know, who you got for the game? I was like, oh man, I forgot about that. So, you know, there aren't no, any sales going on. They ain't reduced the, the price of sodas and, and popcorn and, and, and food, but our people are, you know, when things like this come around, we all of a sudden have extra resources. You know, we don't miss out on the entertainment. Um, but then when it comes time to for the movement, um, comes time, you know, to be proactive, uh, to, to, to have a uh, uh, political and, and legal response to what happened to Tyree Nichols, um, you know, everybody starts scratching their head. So I just wanted to put this out there. Um, you know, for us to 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 reflect upon ourselves as a people, um, how do we strengthen our resolve? Uh, how do we learn from, you know, the lessons of what, 60, 70 years ago, you know? Um, but that's all I got. Uh, I hope that we can do better, you know, as a, and this is more so to my generation, um, you know, well, yeah, mostly, because uh, I know some of y'all like were probably born in like the, my mom was born late 40s, late 40s. Um, so y'all were young at this time, y'all didn't necessarily go through it. But at the end of the day, you know, we have to build another generation um, that can that can make these types of achievements. <clears throat> and the generation that we have right now, uh, the entertainment folks uh the professionals you know we're not getting it done so uh, we got to work to come together and uh going back to education uh, help develop our mindsets to be more uh race first and political so that's all i got um this is not we're not ending early so that y'all can go participate in that entertainment service uh, as a matter of fact <clears throat> alternative You know, um, just to keep us busy for the night so we don't have to, um, come on now, one more time. So we don't have to watch what other people are watching. Uh, check out our YouTube, UNI ACL Division 421 YouTube page. Uh, we got Message to the People, Course of African Philosophy. Um, and we also got some of our old, uh, past mass meetings. So, um, spend a couple hours, um, support our YouTube, uh, education and training. That's what it's all about. So that's all I got. Any questions or comments in closing? All right. We'll close out. Um, Baba James, would you do the pleasure of closing us out? Baba James, you there? All right. Uh, Baba James, you're not there? Okay. I'll close this out. Um, if you would, everyone would uh, come off mute. Repeat after me. Put your black fist in the air. One God. One God. One aim. One aim. One destiny. One destiny. Africa. 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 Africa.
For the Africans. For the Africans. Those at home. Those at home. And those abroad. And those abroad. Race first, family. Race first. Race first.